All right, let's verify more identities. This is just giving us good practice with learning our trig functions better. So again, I think left side is messier on this one just because it's a fraction. Um, you might feel otherwise, but I think it's messier. Um, this one, I can't split the fraction. This is not cosine over one minus cosine over sine. You can't split the denominator. You can split the numerator, but not the denominator. Um, so uh, what can be useful when you have messy denominators is conjugates. So the conjugate is just the same thing, but opposite. So instead of one minus sine, it would be one plus sine. And you'll see why that ends up being useful. So maybe before today you wouldn't have thought to do this, but maybe after today, now you would. And it, it'll give us this nice trig identity. So let's see, on top we get cosine. Actually, let's leave it factored. Cosine times one plus sine theta. Um, if you don't leave it factored, you'll end up factoring it later. Um, but the bottom I'm going to multiply out. So we get 1, we get minus sine theta, we get plus sine theta, and then we get minus sine squared. So those cancel out, and we just get 1 minus sine squared. And why is that a useful identity? So I'm going to go back to our Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And I can either subtract sine or cosine. So let's subtract sine squared. So cosine squared is one minus sine squared or sine squared is one minus cosine squared. So these would also be useful identities to be familiar with, right? Just by subtracting, moving it to the other side. And so then what I notice in this one is this middle identity. So one minus sine squared is cosine squared. So write these down, they'll be just as useful as the Pythagorean. They're considered the same identity, right? They're just rewritten in a different form. So we get cosine, one plus sine, and then we get cosine squared, which is helpful because now we have a single term on the bottom, which is better than having like multiple terms in the denominator. It's really nice to have a single term in the denominator. So cosine and the power cancel out. So we get one plus sine over a single cosine. And now we can split the fraction, right? This is different because there's a single term in the bottom. So this comes back to some algebra rules that we might not remember, but now we're allowed to split it. One plus cosine plus sine over cosine which yay, that's secant and that's tangent. So we did a secant is one over cosine and tangent is sine over cosine and we're done. So it's really nice to get a single term in the denominator. There's more you can do with that. So hopefully this is reviewing some algebra skills as well. All right, should we try one more? You're, you might be starting to notice there is no one way to do this. Um, and so again, you might choose the wrong option the first time and that is okay. Um, so here's an ugly fraction. Um, I'm gonna start with the left side. I could try conjugates, but cotangent and tangent are kind of ugly. So I think I'm gonna try everything in terms of sine and cosine, um, especially because the answer is in terms of sine. So we will do cosine over sine for cotangent minus sine over cosine for tangent. Cosine over sine plus co uh, sine over cosine. Um, so in terms of sine and cosine can be often useful as well. Um, so I'm going to do LCD, which would be just sine times cosine. Just a mix of all the denominators, sine times cosine. Um, these are those messy, this is like a fraction in a fraction. I think they call them complex fractions. So we get cosine times sine times cosine all over sine, that's the first one, minus sine over cosine. 
just distributing LCD and then we'll simplify. Distribute LCD. Um, things should simplify nicely if you do this correctly. So we shouldn't have fractions and fractions when we're done with this. So let's see. All the denominators should cancel. Yep, and they do. Sine and cosine will cancel. Um, so what do we get on top? We get cosine squared minus sine squared all over cosine squared plus sine squared. And then somehow we want to eventually get this to look like one minus sine, two sine squared. We're almost there. Um, I noticed the bottom is equal to one, so that's good. So we get cosine squared minus sine squared all over one, so that disappears. And I'm just going to mess with those Pythagorean identities. So let's bring these down, see if any of them are useful. So I'm thinking about what I want. So my answer is in terms of sine, the final solution. So I think I'm going to keep the sine term and try to find an identity for cosine because we want in terms of sine. So paying attention to what we want is important. So I'm going to go ahead and replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. I'm just going to change it to a t rather than a theta. Yeah, and we did it, right? 1 minus 2 sine squared, and that's what we wanted. So we just proved that that's an identity. We proved that it's true. So pay attention to what you want in the result, because that's going to help you decide which identity to use. And you are going to make the wrong choice sometimes, and that is okay. That's part of learning. Sometimes we get frustrated because I'm making the right choice in videos, uh, but that's because I've already done these problems and I'm just redoing them. Right? The first time you will make the wrong choice, and that is okay. Just start over and try again. But this is just going to help us get used to these trig identities and some important algebra rules. All right, I'll see you back for the next section.